And now I'd like to introduce to you someone else who has a unique perspective on the Hole in the Wall organization, uh, Paul and Joanne's daughter, Lissy Newman. Uh, it feels really great to be, to be able to stand up here and be the DNA, which is, um, which is the thing that I can do that a lot of people can't do. Um, you know, this isn't something that I did, but it's something that I, I can receive and, and pass on. So I really appreciate that. Um, it's certainly appropriate because the first camp grew out of Connecticut soil and blossomed into something that even my father found endlessly surprising and inspiring. Uh, the growth, the breadth, and the diversity of programs related to that original camp are astounding. The sibling and family support, hospital outreach programs, but the leap from local to national and from national to international can all be traced back to some important ideas that my father deeply believed in, which we have talked about before. The first and most important being raise a little hell, which really was his, his, his personal motto. Um, I think my father saw raising hell as some sort of universal right that no one should be deprived of. Um, this was a man who only became an actor because he got kicked off the football team for raising a little too much hell one night, <laughs> and that is a true story. The energy and the commitment of staff and volunteers, doctors and nurses makes my head spin. Um, I can remember the orientation session at my second summer as a volunteer. Um, that was when Sarah was in my cabin. Um, they told us that overall this would be the most medically needy group of kids that camp had ever hosted. And I have to say, all the medication, the infirmary visits, are all just a tinny, forgettable background noise behind the usual mayhem that is camp. Um, the way things work, all that stuff is just seamless. It's in the background. It's not important. It's something that happens so that what can really happen at camp is kicking butt and pranking people and, you know, fishing and worms and riding. Um, and, and stuff starts to happen. It's, it's stuff that's really, really hard to quantify. The original camp evolved into a place where there's this, this real culture of kindness and support that is exponential. It's, it's a respect for childhood and a dedication to giving it back to those who have been cheated out of a part of it. And that dedication is really, really fierce. The thing that I want to talk about really um, is, is difficult to gather into co a, a coherent thought or a coherent sentence either. Um, it's this indefinable, amorphous juju, for lack of a better word, that is camp, the part that begins to heal. Um, we don't like to say heal because that's pompous, but it it's heals in a soulful way. This juju is undoubtedly much the better for brick and mortar facilities that have grown up all over the world. Those facilities are a real testament to the incredible generosity of um, individuals, of groups, and even of governments that have been moved by hole in the, the Hole in the Wall mission. Speaking about the very beginning of camp, my father once said in the preface to the book, I Will Sing Life, which I highly recommend, by the way. It's all about kids at camp, and it was published like 20, what, 20 years ago? And it's totally relevant. It's beautiful. It's got poetry in it. It's a good book. It's called um, I Will Sing Life, and I think you can still find it. Um, and I think they're going to republish it, I hope, sometime soon. Um, he said, quote, whatever the impetus, the place exists. It wasn't so much built, it simply exploded into operation out of other people's generosity. It magically collected everything, canoes, a swimming pool, volunteers, architects, doctors, fishing tackle, nurses, a pig, snakes, <laughs> an amphitheater, food, loyalty, an endless list. And what we've learned over the past 20 years or so, however, is this. The real power of the hole in the wall experience is that people who are deeply immersed in this particular culture of hell raising and mayhem and safety and love and respect can travel with it. It is very portable. You can put it on a rolling cart and take it into a hospital. You can even pack it into a suitcase and take it to Africa or Cambodia, and you can teach other people how to make it happen. Uh, my first session at camp happened to have a lot of kids who were from rough circumstances in various inner cities, and you know, imagine not being able to leave the house to play in the streets, not, you, your mother wouldn't let you go outside, you're really stuck inside all day uh, because of very real dangers that are outside, and now combine that with you know, chronic pain 
and hospital visits and a fear of what your own body might be doing to you. And it's, it's really hard for most of us to imagine that. Mm -hmm. You know, we value our children. We live in a culture that generally answer, uh, honors the concept of childhood, and that's what camp is for. It's just for honoring the concept of childhood and bringing that to places where it doesn't always have a chance to exist. And we're really, really proud to be in any way part of it, and thank you so much for honoring the association. It's a, it's a good organization, and I firmly believe that it deserves that honor, and we really appreciate it.